Okay. So now we did that example, we go through and we, we talk about the method of joints. It's not the best method um, because it's, it's so many steps, you know, even for a relative, you can imagine for a, you know, we did this example here and this one took quite a bit of time and there's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different elements. Imagine you start having some of these complicated structures with, you know, 20, 30 uh, members, it's going to be a whole lot of work. Well, the other option that we're going to do is we're going to um, do a method of sections. But in order to do that, we want to talk about a specific example, joints under special loading conditions. And this is to help us with the method of sections. Forces in opposite members of intersecting in two straight lines at a joint are equal. Okay, so there's some special conditions where you can kind of look at things and you can just say, hey, I know the force in that. Um, and these are those conditions. So if you have these two members, if they're both straight, right? So there's no, you notice there's no triangles here. There's no sh changes in directions. You have these members. Well, you're going to know that this force has to equal this force and this force has to equal that force. That comes up a little bit. This is the big one. This is the big, 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 big one that if you understand this, you could, you could quite frankly not know this and you could just do your math and you'll just have to take extra steps to get to the right answer. But if you understand this one, this can make your life a lot easier. And it's saying that the forces and two opposite members are equal when a load is aligned with the third member, right? So we have this member here, there's this load aligned with the third member, right? And the third member uh, force is equal to the load. And so in this case, where there's no load, it it's means that this member, the force in this member is zero. And these, the member in AD and AB are gonna be identical. The forces in two members connected at a joint are equal if the members are aligned and zero otherwise. Okay, so you have these two forces here, right? So the way I think, so here and here, AD and AB are going to be equal. What about here? If there's any force in this member right here, if AD, this one has an X and a Y component of this. So this AB has no Y component of it, right? So if this has any force whatsoever, how can AB account, or counteract the Y component of it? It simply can't. And so therefore you can look at this and say, if it's if there's no external force here, these both have to be zero or otherwise they cannot be in equilibrium. And why do we do this? It's because when you recognize these special loading conditions, it simplifies the analysis of a truss. So let's look at this truss. Here's a fairly complicated truss. Okay, you'll notice the ones in green. They, they give away the answer already. So look at this, this member right here. Okay, so consider between IK and KL. If this JK term had any force in this direction, how could these counteract the up and down, right? These only have X components, they have no Y components. And so if this was had any Y components, you couldn't have equilibrium at this point, right? There'd be no way to, to counteract that. So this force must be zero. Okay, it is not immediate, immediately obvious to look at this one and say this has to be zero. But, if you convince yourself that this is zero, then okay, act as if this is not there. Now look at this thing right here. We have a nice straight section through here. What can this section do to counteract this force? Nothing. And therefore, this one must be zero. Now again, you, you can only figure out that this one is zero after you figure out that this is zero. Otherwise, you look at here and maybe there's some force here, but you're counteracting it here and you don't know. Okay, and then you come look over here. Now at this point, you can't say anything, but right here, if there is, if this BC element has any force, there's no way that uh, that AC and CE can counteract the vertical component of that, so those must be zero. So it's, why do you do this? It just makes it so that you can come in and look at this and just right off the bat, scratch off that one, scratch off this one, ah, scratch off this one, and then all, and then you, boom, you're done, and it's just that many fewer things that you have to look at. Let's look at this one real quick. Okay, so we just got rid of this and then rid of this. What about this HI element? So this one intersects with the straight line, right? But if HI is non-zero, all of a sudden you have a force here. And so the force, imagine if HI was zero. Well, if HI was zero, then this thing would have to move because there's nothing there. So you know that HI cannot be zero is the point. Okay, and that leads us to the analysis of structures, trusses, excuse me, trusses by the method of sections. Okay, so what is the method of sections? When a, when a force in only one of the members, or maybe just a relatively few number of the members, is desired, then the method of sections works well. Not only does it work well, this is the, by far for me the way preferred method. Um, I, you know, on test time, I will make you do maybe one method of joints, maybe, 
if I'm grumpy. I don't know. It's it's a lot of work. Uh, this is a much more reasonable way to do it. Cause, but the key is this is in this one is it, you look at this section right here. If you're asked to find between BD, BE, and CE, so these three members, then you can do this method of sections. If you had to find all of them, you can still use a method of sections, sections, but you're gonna have to do it, you know, a whole bunch of times, and you're gonna do the same amount of work. Okay. So how do we do this? We To determine the force in members BD, say, right, in this member right here, we're going to pass a section through the truss. We're, basically what we're doing, we've talked about this all the time in free body diagrams, so you can cut through anything you want. You just have to replace it with the appropriate forces, right? Well, these are two force members, which means that you can cut through them, and what are you doing? You know that the force is in the direction of the members. And so when you cut through this, you know there's going to be an unknown in this direction, unknown in this direction, and an unknown in this direction. So with only three members cut by the section, the equations for static equilibrium can be applied, right? And so you can calculate this. So if you were to do this, you take the sum of the moments, say at A, and then you're going to have some forces here, forces here, forces here, force here, and you can you have these presumably P1 and P2 are known, and you have one, two, three, three unknowns, three equations, some of your forces, some of your moments, and you're good to go. So with a method of sections, again, you draw it's you cut through whatever it is that you're interested in determining and then you deal with it like a chapter four problem you just have a simple you know three equations and three unknowns to be able to solve the problems so let's do an example of just this where we determine the force in a very specific set of members <laughs>